see now in the dark green. They used to have the uh, animal print, which was like the big five across the front. They've gone for a more traditional South African flag kit this year. There's the Swissies. You got Jose Antonio Hamida in the red and yellow of Spain. Dark blue this year for France, not the regular red, white, and blue we're used to. And we're underway. A lot of tension and nerves. The start is all important for these guys. As I said, about 84 riders starting, and you've got to get a great start off to the left-hander. And they sweep up the road really fast pace already. Four actually look like Swiss colours. And uh, we'll pan across now as they take the road across towards what is known as Baghdad Highway. They've got to get across there, and that's when they'll hit their first real technical section, which is Labir. And it looks like Nina Schurter is sitting in there as well now. And we have... Uh, Plate number six is Florian Vogel. Also to the front, Fluke good there. There goes Ralph Naff, another one of the top contenders to watch out for. And this looks like uh, one of the Germans could be more at start. One of the hard things, though, when we have big fields is that the leaders are on the line for a very long time and they can lose a lot of their warm-up. So, but usually about an hour out, the boys are out on their bikes getting ready to start. So they'll be very, very active from an hour before. Uh, when I was over there at 1 o'clock, Luke was already heading out for his uh, warm-up. So here's Barry Stander sitting in third. He's running two niners. And uh, right behind him, Ralph Naff. And then you have Marco Fontana with plate number 10. 24, having a great ride today. Maxime Marot for the French team. He's the leading French rider. Down through this descent, you've got to go in committed. And uh, whoa, that was very close there for Fontana. He hung on. Very nice line by Maxime Marot. An hour and three quarters of racing. So settle in, folks. It's going to be a long one. And we have... Kulhavi and Schurter crossing the, crossing the line with about a, well, it looks like it's going to be about a 12, 13 second gap over Burry Stander. Goes out to 14 seconds. Burry Stander through in third place, the under 23 world champion from 2009, with Ralph Naff going through in 14th, equal with Fontana. Maxime Marot, 20 seconds down, in sixth place. Then Julian Absalon comes through, 28 seconds down, followed by Jose Hamida. Next up, Todd Wells in 14th. And we should be waiting on Jeff Kabush now in 15th place. As these two riders working each other over, Carlos Coloma goes through in 16th, Stefan Tempia in 17th, Emma Lindgren in 18th, the Swedish, uh, Swedish rider, Liam Kulhavi has gone through in first. Nino Schurter has not come through. So I don't know what's happened there in that last little descent. It could be him powering through now in the background. It is. So something's happened where he's come off on the descent in the slippery conditions. So Schurter back in fourth now. Naff in second. Fontana in third. Barry Stanner in fifth. Jose Hermeda in sixth. And Absalon holding down seventh in that train on his coattails as well. There's our leader. What does this young man do with... Uh, a lead in the world championship and one of the biggest riders in the world falling back looks like I'll try and see his clothing see if we can see anything on the clothing of Nino Schurter and confirm that he did have a fall on the descent but he did lose a good 13 or 14 seconds he's trying to fight back now from the front let's look at his shoulders nothing there on the hip well I can't think of a mechanical issue he would have had on the descent that would have cost him 15 seconds unless he did tr quickly swap a wheel out but that would have to be a very quick front wheel swap Carlos in there as well. This is Florian Vogel. He's lost contact a bit, but descends quite well. So Florian Vogel, who was sitting back in position 11. Now we can see that's Hamida and Boris Stander working with Marco Fontana, third, fourth, and fifth in sixth place now. We have Ralph Knapp being caught up by the seventh place, Julian Absalon. Souser we haven't seen. We know that he had a slow leak and he may have gone back to the had to go to the pits to change that over. So Christoph Souser losing contact. See who we've got coming up now. Looks like Spanish colours. Could be Carlos Coloma. It is indeed Carlos Coloma plate number twenty five. So he's fighting his way uh. back up. Thirty-eight seconds is nothing. Um, I that thought was your, that was what you had yesterday in your race, only thirty-eight yeah. seconds. Yeah, and uh, maybe in the front, Nino or so, some someone have a crash, or yeah, and then it's uh, the race uh, starts uh, from you, from yep. you, and uh, I think all is open. Now we see Hamida taking the lead, so Hamida's not only bridged the gap, 
he's gone straight to the lead and gone past the two riders uh, in a, probably a, a way to try and show his confidence to those two by going straight past them and into the lead. That's a very strong move. We've got a question from Frederick who's asking you, Matthias, which for you is the toughest part of this Mont saint -Anne track? Ever leading um. the elite world championship of mountain bike cross country. So real history in the making here right now. No matter what happens, this is the first time ever that an African athlete has led the men's cross country at elite level in 20 years of racing World Cups and World Championships. We've seen him lead in World Cups, obviously, but World Championship, it's a whole different thing. He was under 23 last year. Yeah, but um, you cannot dare not go too fast in the first section of the stroke section. And... Um, yeah, but when you go too fast, uh, you are too fast in the end of this, uh, and, you go and then over you the have corner. maybe a puncture, and yeah, it's right. very, very risky, and also for, uh, maybe you must just ride, maybe, yeah. Say Hamida so going through for the Merida team, riding for Spain, only nine seconds down, those three guys are all together, can this group of... Absalon and Nino Schurter get on the back. What do you think, Matthias? It's very, very close with three laps to go. These guys will work together, do you think, to try and get the gap back, or are they two big opponents? They're always fighting each other on the track. Now, if this was the last lap, Matthias, who would you think would be the winner out of these three? If this was the last lap, who do you think? Um, I think Hermido. Because of his experience? Yeah, and um, yeah, for me was Hermit on this track. Uh, yeah, I pay for it, and um, I think uh, in the last lap, um, Hermit is a very strong rider. We saw that in the, the beginning of the season yes. by two or three. You knew the gap from yourself back yeah. to the next rider. All right, watching the riders go down now through this particular section called La, uh, called Beatrice. This is Nino Schurter, you can see the sunshine out, the shadows, this section now in the shadows, so not drying out very much on the rocks. Nino Schurter away from Absalon, wanting now to catch the lead group, and uh, it's Hamida back at the front again, Barry Stander and Kulhavi having to catch up a little bit of lost ground on that descent. Bobby B in there from the specialized team running alongside, here's Julian Absalon and uh, see how smoothly it's hard to pick up the French this is a new uniform for them this year very dark blue and uh, we're used to seeing them in the light blue like the, on the panel of his shorts you can see the light blue now this is a bit of a replay here this is when it was raining heavily and uh, that was Absalom going down so that's something that in one house and uh, it's a, a very good um atmosphere yeah yeah that's 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 true yeah Okay, so we're coming around now with two laps to go. Two laps to go for our leaders, and Jose Hamida has an eight-second lead over Barry Stander and Yaroslav Kulhavi in second and third. Here's Nino Schurter sitting in fourth place. If he's within 30 or 40 seconds, it's not over for him. He can really fight back and win back the World Championship. He's recently signed a four-year contract right through to 2014 with the Scott Swiss Power Team, and he comes through now at 36 seconds. Well... That is a tough gap as we uh, first three get together and they slow down a little bit to look at each other. He can take advantage of that. Yeah, I think that is maybe the, yeah, the advantage for, for Nino. Yeah. But I think uh, the, the leader riders uh, know that. That, he, that, that he's coming, yeah, yeah. They're not going to mess around. This is 30 seconds further back to Absalon. I think it's over for Absalon as world champion. I don't think that he can come back with two laps to go if everything right, stays. Catherine Pendrel and Catherine, commiserations on not being on the podium today, but I know you had a great race and you really gave it your all. How was it? Uh, yeah, it was uh, one of the hardest races I've ever done in my life, I think. And, uh, you know, it got really exciting on that last lap. Uh, Arena and Willow, we made each other work for those podium, podium spots. Unfortunately, I came up just, you know, two seconds. Going into it too hard, too fast. You've got all the rocks that can puncture you. And then you've got the sharp right-hander at the end that you can blow out and lose a lot of time just getting all caught up in that corner. So it is a really tricky section. As you said, you saw your opportunity for a medal just in that one section. You can make up so much time. Yeah, you know, well, it's, it's, there's you have to be able to get ahead of the other rider, right? So it's like, particularly when I saw Willow was going to take the other line, it's like, I was okay, it's now or never, you know, got to go for it. Oh, and well, nothing well, really. you really got to go for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think kind of 
regretting not taking a bit more risks out there. I'm just pushing it a bit, a bit more on the descents and the slippery, slipperiness. But well, there's uh, this is Liam Colleen going through now, and they've got past Coloma now, so that means that Jeff Kabush has moved up into what I would think would be about sixth place now. So he's just one position outside of his World Cup regular spot of top five, and uh, that means that Ralph Neff. No, is this Jeff Kabush now? Jeff That's there now. Okay, so. It's coming within 30 seconds. It's not all over for him either. A good couple of climbs could bring him back into contention. And we don't wish any mishaps on the riders in front. But if they, anything was to happen, they're going to be in the clutches of the riders behind. This is Nino Schurter coming in in fourth place. And just outside of the medals. They're pretty impressive, these bridges that they've built for the for the World Championship. So many fine structures around the place. Yeah, the organizers have just done a great job getting this course ready and I uh, know we've had some pretty solid rain and it's uh, holding up well. What do you call the black bugs here? We call them midges in uh, in Scotland. What are they called over here? No see them. No see them. You don't see them <laughs> until they bite you. That's right. I'm scratching one on my ankle right now. They, they, <laughs> they are pretty thick and heavy in the forest but uh, out of the seat and pedaling up here. These little grunty climbs are really, really tiring on the legs, especially on the last lap. It's looking good though. Yeah. Here's a replay, and this is probably just uh, where we got uh, Hamida out of the seat and attacking. That's, uh, no, there's one of the Obeya. No, it wouldn't be Obeya, it would have been one of the Spanish staff. So, here's fourth place, Nino Schurter, plate number one, wearing plate one as the reigning world champion. And possibly out of the medals today. Was seventh, enough to get her a, a crystal trophy for fifth overall in the World Cup. Her first season in cross-country Olympic where she's taken it fully seriously and um, she's 36 years of age. Yeah, and she's definitely a, a rider to watch. She, uh, you know, she's pretty strong and... Uh, I couldn't believe... Uh, when I saw her after the podium, her legs are so tiny. <laughs> I don't know where she finds the power. She's really skinny leg it's rider. It's in the length, I think. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I was really, really surprised because not all the riders have massive calf muscles in, in cycling. A lot of... I think that's a bit of a misconception. Sometimes it's that power to weight ratio and Matthias, who was in here before, also a very slight rider but with a lot of power. Um, Nino Schurter, a much stockier rider, definitely a more... Uh, ideally, I think you're hoping to take three women to the Olympics? Um, well, they've actually changed it in 2008. Now the maximum amount of women that can go is actually only two. Right. Um, so, um, you know, we'll, we'll have to see... Uh, Maria Lenz talked about retirement, but, uh, you know, I think she's got some of her fire and love back so uh, we'll see if she sticks around and then uh, you know we've definitely got uh, Emily Batty who's uh, getting for it as well. Yeah tough competition but not as tough as it is on the Swiss men's team that will be oh, a real tough one to really pick. Tight. Um, the women have got through quite comfortably. Cole Harvey can see the world championship just two corners away from him must be so tantalizingly close to be in that position and know that just those meters ahead of you is the difference between being world champion elite and second place and second place nothing to be sniffed at yeah, but it was looking a bit low there for a second but he's looking okay <laughs> even the announcers get yeah, it <laughs> yeah we get it and uh, and I, I nearly put the curse on, uh, on on Maya when she was coming down saying were you running a hard tail yourself as well I was yeah yeah, yeah. and um, it was okay to do that because a lot of the men is, and he crosses the line in one hour 52 26 he cannot believe it he cannot believe that he has finally won this world title and with a solid gap for 10 years since he won the under 23, 10 years later he wins the elite and uh, I've got to say I'm welling up a little bit here too because I, I know this guy very well and how much that means to him. He's got his <laughs> pistol, El Pistolo, he's got the gun there. He's shaking, he's absolutely shaking. He cannot believe he's finally done it. Yaroslav Kulhavi, a true sportsman, comes over. What a great race they had together. And he takes the silver medal, Yaroslav Kulhavi. That's a name to watch for the future, folks. Winning in Wyndham last week and now takes the silver medal. The Spanish, there's Cristobal Sanchez, the director of the cross-country program, running cross as well. They cannot believe it. They've finally won this world title with Jose Hamida. Very, very emotional and special moments there. And uh, here's Barry Stander coming in to get a bronze medal. And he's going to be very happy with that. You can tell as well. He's got a smile on his face. The South African takes the first ever medal for a, an African athlete in the World Championships of Elite Men and uh, Elite Cross Country for 20 years. That is the first medal for the continent of Africa. Fantastic stuff.
But, uh, well, a lot of emotion here in the commentary booth for a wonderful win for Jose Hamida. And uh, he does so with a margin of 30 seconds, 29 seconds to be precise. One minute 10 back then to Barry Stander. And it'll be the reigning world champion prior to today, Nino Schurter, who should be coming in fourth place. And he hasn't been able to bridge that gap. But, uh, wow, it's just so special to see something like that. That's what this sport is all about. Yeah, it's uh, who can put it together on the